Welcome back to YouTube. We are back in the studio at Ultraflux Rotherham. This is uh, my podcast room, now new content room. So today I want to talk to you about protein intake. This is definitely the topic that has been touched on many, many times. And I really want to break down a lot of variables that you may not consider when it comes to protein intake, because believe it or not, Protein intake is not just about building muscle tissue. Your protein intake is going to not only build the muscles that you need, but it also allows you to grow other tissue, your bones, your tendons, ligaments, even some of the neurotransmitters that you have. And it basically allows your body to restore and recover on a cellular basis, which means that you need protein intake and the level of the protein intake will vary depending on your activity levels, age, and your muscle mass. So, how much protein do you need to maximize gains? Now, I'm not going to quote the studies that we all have seen going doing rounds and rounds on the internet. What I am going to talk to you about is practical experience and what I have seen with 15 years of bodybuilding and coaching with thousands of clients and what I have seen the biggest and the most results in. If your goal is maximizing growth, protein intake I prefer the most is three and a half grams per lean kilogram of body weight. Now, this would mean a hundred kilogram male that is lean would need around 350 grams of protein per day. Now, caveat to this, is per lean kilogram of body weight. If someone is 100 kilograms, but they are pretty chubby, they likely need less. So make sure you take into consideration your lean body mass when you calculate your protein intake. Does protein intake vary between naturals and assisted males and females? I do not believe it does. We all need a similar amount of protein to rebuild the muscle tissue that has been broken down within every single training session and give your muscle the nutrients that it needs to build stronger and build back bigger. Now, regardless of what the evidence says and regardless of what the studies quote, I do not believe that smaller or lesser protein intake is ever going to be quite effective. However, some considerations that you must make when it comes to protein intake is also digestibility. This is where you will need a degree of leeway between individuals as to how much they can handle in terms of protein intake, also where they are in their journey. If you have an athlete that is pushing calories at the latter end of off season and the carbohydrates are extremely high, a consideration that you must make for this is carbohydrates are protein sparing, which means that the protein amount you are eating may actually need to come down in order for you to be able to digest all the calories well and still assimilate all the food and calories that you are eating. Where your protein intake may actually directly need to increase is as you go into a deficit and as your calories start to come down, your total protein intake inevitably will come down from trace protein that is included in your carbohydrates and fat sources, which means that your direct protein intake may actually need to come down in order for you to have enough protein to be able to retain the muscle mass that you need when it comes to a deficit. Now, protein is not only extremely important for the reasons that I've mentioned, however, a consideration that you must make, protein is one micronutrient that is extremely, extremely beneficial in a diet phase due to the thermogenesis that it offers and it allows you to keep much higher satiety. So where I tend to lean towards the higher end of scale of protein intake is with individuals post-show that need control of the satiety and towards latter end of contest prep when calories do tend to come down and trace protein does start to come down. This is where it would be extremely, val extremely valuable for you to actually increase your protein intake slightly, not just for muscle retention, but also for satiety. This is going to be extremely useful for those of you guys who have all the parents and all the clients. With age, 
the amount of protein that you actually absorb decreases. And from studies, and this is where I'm going to credit to Dr. Jackson and his nutrition course, that was amazing, one of the best courses I've ever done. Uh, he actually presented a lot of evidence and data that suggested that majority of mortality cases and illnesses was actually driven due to lack of protein and low protein take in elderly individuals, which means that if you are working with clients who are older, or you have client, or you have members, family members that are under eating protein, this is where I would definitely highly advise them to increase their protein intake as they age in order to prevent illnesses and actually reduce the aging process. Now, last but not least, which protein sources are the most beneficial? To me, I will always opt for complete amino acid profile protein sources. So eggs, fish, whey proteins, and again, whey isolate has been demonized in many cases. However, most people don't understand good quality whey is always going to be offering you more bioavailable protein than any other source of protein. The only time where this becomes problematic is when companies add certain fillers and overload the protein powders with sweeteners that tend to skew digestion. So if you are having digestive issues from whey, it's not the whey itself that is to blame, it's just the company that you are using. Now, personally for me, I do like to keep a large variety of protein sources varying between fish, meat sources, and some dairy in place. Now, this is one of the super honest guys. If you are vegan or if you are a vegetarian, this is where you will struggle as a bodybuilder to get an adequate amount of protein that will be of high quality to give you the building blocks that you need in order for you to maximize growth and get the most out of your protein intake. So what you actually eat truly matters. And remember guys, you can only eat what you can digest. So if you wasn't sure of how much protein you need to eat or what protein sources you actually need guys, hopefully this video clears it up and let me know if you have any questions below. For now guys, peace out and take care for now. And if you wanna learn more on subjects like this, uh, please drop me an email and we can talk about it a little bit more on my MK Excellence Coaching Program that covers nutrition, training, and all the intricacies of bodybuilding with live lectures from myself, uh, Charlotte and Meg, and weekly Q and A's. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and peace out for now.